The Bell Curve, Intelligent and Class Structure in America. My name is Timothy Nelson. This is Math, 20, Math 5322 for January 31st, 2012. Let's define some things. Intelligent, something real that is varies from person to person, is universal and ancient as any understanding about the state of being. The normal distribution, as you saw earlier in Dr. Young's presentation on the bell curve, you see the bell curve is a U-shaped, upside down U-shape, where 68.2% of it falls in the middle. 95.4 follows two, sta two sta standard deviations away. 99.7 follows three standard deviation. This bell curve is the typical bell curve for general things. It comes in very handy in mathematics. Some more definition, correlation coefficient, known as R, little r, or person r, a measure of strength of the linear relationship between two variables that is defined in terms of a sample of the variance that divided by the sample standard deviation. It, this goes back to 1888. The intelligent quotient, the intelligent quotient IQ at first was just a, a way of expressing a person's, usually a child, mental level related to his or her competency in 1908. The study of cognitive ability was assessed, sorry, recently, recently on of the relevant instant in which the new soft science were able to do their work with reasons not too far, not too short of standards of traditional science. A new species with psychology was created, polymetrics. Polymetrics is a very key part to the argument of the IQ. The controversies on IQ. There's a famous quote from Lippmann wrote, as you can see here. Early on IQ propaganda, they filled the all the known science journals, soft journals, with all the propaganda kids, specifying this is a great way to test little kids, and this is how you do it, and this way you do it. They kind of this propaganda was similar to the way the Nazis used the propaganda. They somewhat slowly integrated the propaganda so that you can see, so that you see their way of thinking. The I two uh, confirmations. The method for co collecting and analyzing quality psychology data were still new, and some new inference mistakes were made. Basically, we had a lot of unknown things to statistics that you did not understand how to collect. People were still finding out how what was right to collect and what was wrong to collect. Uh, many people that were collecting were unprofessionals. There were people off the streets that didn't have well enough background on statistics. So what is the argument? Well the problem was is that why we keep having this round? Well schools, military forces, industries, and governments kept using this constantly to analyze the thing. They kept using propaganda to find what was wrong with people and they basically figured out that this is kind of just sticked due to those big factors. Let's go deeper. Paul of 1930 had a debate where intelligence is almost entirely produced by genetics or whether the environment also played a role. This is very key in the propaganda they use in the 1930s to convince people to use the IQ test. By the 1960s, the point had shifted dramatically. They did not care anymore for the gender or the environment. As you'll see later on, the, contro the controversy will change. The backlash. In 1968, Arthur Jensen, education and psychology, an expert on testing from the University of California at Berkeley, um, he took the idea and he challenged it with many articles. In the mid 1970s, he denounced the IQ test due to the bias in towards subgroups and blacks, uh, poverty, Asians, Americans, whites. Jerry wrote an article going back to the backlash, the bankrupt of science without scholarship. In the article, he says he has permitted both science and universities and hook them away large segments of government and society. The propaganda had turned against IQ. So finally, people woke up and realized that all this propaganda in the 1930s was wrong, 
And it didn't take to 1969 and the mid-70s that people realized it was very wrong, so they started using propaganda against them for the IQ tests. Breaking down soft science. Soft science is slow. A science like psychology, it's not really truly, truly, truly defined, but it has enough, enough statistics based for it. Um, psychology, psychologists lose IQ tests all the time. By the, 19, by the early 1990s, they could be roughly divided into three purposes for it. The classic, revision, and radicals. That's how the IQ test was breaking down. The classics. It tells us that the structure. Basically, this is the original IQ test. It tells you as a structure how well do you do in structured environments. The revisions. It tries to figure. It may try to figure out what a person is doing when exercising his his or her intelligence rather than what elements or intelligence are put together. This is the precursor stage of cognitive development. Um, this is what a lot of people nowadays, when you go to workshop as teachers, you hear cognitive development. It's all those wonderful things that we have to sit through many hours and hours of learning. The final one is radicals. This is the theory of multi intelligence. There are seven of them. Um, some key ones that most people probably in our class are religious mathematics, internal personal, mu mus musical, and body. Those people have to move. This is also on a new wave of our. A new wave of how people are doing it in the classrooms. The causes on the IQ test. There was a society and economic gap separation high school grads from college. In 1900, there's only 2%, 2% of 23-year-olds has a college degree. By the 1990s, 30% of the 23-year-olds had graduated from college. When you have very little people go to college, the IQ test is very small. As more people go to college, you're actually skewing your data to the right to shift the mean up because more and more people are more educated. They're more, more rounded people. This goes back to the Greeks of how they wanted everyone to have math, science, arts, PE. The more rounded way you are, the more ed the higher IQ is. So the more the more percentage of people have a college degree, the more likely the IQ will shift up. Bias on the IQ. Race. Race is a key part. A lot of people that have studied the IQ over the years have noticed that African Americans usually have scored lower on the IQ test than the Caucasians. So what they have been doing on the IQ test is skewing it towards the African American lifestyle. They have been skewing it towards more back to it so it fits more them because African Americans and Caucasians use different words when you go to different parts of the country. So that also has been skewing the IQ test up through time. Bias on IQ in bias on IQ test income. Over the last couple of decades, the IQ test has been corrected for rich and poor bias. Poor people usually have scored lower IQs than rich people. A lot of people would think, well, wouldn't that make sense? If you're a rich person, your IQ should be higher because you don't understand how to work the system. That's not necessarily true. Some people don't want to work for their money anymore, so they decide to be poor. Um, they've been doing a lot of things wrong. With, they've been fixing a lot of the tests to fit the IQ of tests for poor people. Not all people, not all poor people are have liar IQs. Just usually they do. But you have to look at the social economics. Rich people can buy things. They can experience more things, and they have IQ, the IQ test experience tests for those kind of things. They can test for caviar. They can test for jets. Poor people don't have those kind of things. So that is causing the IQ test to skew up. In conclusion, the mathematical concepts of bell curves are very important concepts in all science today. It gives you an understanding of what is normal and what is not a normal in the universe. However, not knowing a study normal or new and or soft science that may lead to policies on citizens of countries could lead to excellence or trouble depending on who's controlling it. This is a prime example of the Nazis. The Nazis had a great new science and all their things, but they use it for the bad. Thus, you need to know the history behind how you got there, meaning if they collect data, see how they're skewing it, because data can be skewed in your favor. You just have to understand how they do it. So always do your homework on new improved ideas.